Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm excited to share with you the new iPad Air along with the Apple Pencil Pro. Let's unbox everything and test it out and I'll share my thoughts on it and the key differences to the new M4 iPad Pro and which one you should get. I pre-ordered this from Apple's website along with the M4 iPad Pro which I made a separate video about. This is actually my first ever iPad Air and I went for the 11 inch size in the color purple. Seeing this in person, I'd say it was more of a muted silver purple shade and personally, I would have preferred something more vibrant. I was actually very torn between this and the starlight color and I'd love to know in the comments which is your favorite out of the four color choices. I'm kind of disappointed that Apple got rid of the pink color that we previously had in the M1 iPad Air. I went for 256 gigabytes of storage and this should be plenty for what I use my iPad for, which is mainly note taking, drawing and entertainment. By the way, this box art apparently spells out the word air, but I've been staring at this and I just cannot make it out. So let's talk about the key new features. This iPad Air has a more powerful M2 chip, previously only available on the iPad Pro. This means it's going to be faster and more capable at handling performance intensive tasks like video editing, animation and gaming. It now comes in a larger 13 inches as well as the 11 and there's also more storage options. The front camera is now centered in landscape mode instead of being on the side, which I think makes more sense. And the biggest update in my opinion is the support for the new Apple Pencil Pro. The Apple Pencil Pro is one of the main reasons why I wanted to upgrade because unfortunately it is not compatible with any previous iPads. Design wise, it looks very similar to the second gen except it says Pencil Pro at the top and there's a bunch of new features that are super useful if you like to take notes or draw on your iPad and I'll talk about those in more detail later in the video. The main difference between this and the iPad Pro, in my opinion, is the better OLED screen on the Pro and later in the video I have even more clips to show you the difference. The iPad Air is also not quite as thin, so it does feel a little bit heavier and I imagine that will be even more obvious on the 13 inch. The Air has the M2 chip whilst the Pro has the M4, but if you're not working with super powerful apps then I don't think you would notice a significant difference in performance. The iPad Air still uses Touch ID instead of Face ID and the new Magic Keyboard with the function keys is only compatible with the iPad Pro. Those are the key differences in my opinion, but there's some other features like better speakers, a better scanner, Thunderbolt support and ProRes video recording on the iPad Pro. The price difference between the Air and the Pro is $400, so if you're debating between them, you'll need to consider whether these things justify the extra cost. I've always been an iPad Pro user and I'm pleasantly surprised at the performance capabilities of the iPad Air. I use my digital planner and journal every day and I feel like the experience is just as good on this iPad and I don't feel like I'm missing any functionality. If you're a student who wants to take notes, annotate over lecture slides and pass exam papers, then this is going to be perfectly capable of doing all of those things. Procreate is my favorite drawing app and once again this worked smoothly and I didn't notice any lagging issues with the pen even when the brush strokes are very fast. I also tried out some other creative apps and personally cannot tell the difference to if I were using the iPad Pro. I don't use any super powerful apps so I'm pretty sure the iPad Air is already more than sufficient for anything creative that I want to do. I tried out video editing in Final Cut Pro and the only time I noticed a speed difference was in exporting a large project file. Here I have the same project on both and you can see the iPad Pro finishes exporting a little bit quicker compared to the Air. I also played a couple of graphically intense games and everything ran smoothly without any lag. I never use my iPad without a screen protector and I'm going to be applying the Paperlike brand, who are also the sponsors of this video. Paperlike is the original paper feel screen protector and this is a matte screen protector available for all models of iPad. Writing directly on the glass screen can feel very slippery and with the Paperlike screen protector you get much better control and precision when you're using the Apple Pencil and I just find my handwriting to be a lot neater when I'm taking notes. 
It also stops your hand from sticking to the glass when you're resting on it. And even when you're not using the Apple Pencil, this can help to reduce glare on the screen. Paperlike's unique nano dots are these tiny micro beads that add resistance and improve haptic feedback when using the Apple Pencil, emulating the feeling of writing on paper. So if you're looking for an iPad screen protector and you want to replicate the feeling of writing and drawing on paper, then make sure to check out my link in the video description and try out Paperlike. The Apple Pencil has some exciting new features and my favorite one is Squeeze, which brings up a quick menu whenever you squeeze it. Here I'm in GoodNotes app and you can see this toolbar pops up with all of the essential tools. I really like this feature because it just makes it a lot more convenient to switch between tools and you can also customize the squeeze function in settings and change it to something else, such as bringing up the color palette or erase. You can also customize the squeeze to activate a shortcut, such as opening up your favorite app or taking a screenshot, making this a super useful feature. You'll find this feature in the Notes app and Freeform, as well as any third-party apps that build this in. You can also long press on the undo button to see all of the previous undo steps, which is very convenient for speeding up the workflow when you want to undo multiple steps in one go. The Apple Pencil now has haptic feedback, which is a small vibration when you squeeze or snap an object into place that lets you know your action is complete. There's also a new barrel roll feature, which lets you roll the pencil to change the orientation of the brush tip, and you're able to see what it looks like before you put it onto the screen. This is the Apple Pencil Hover feature that we previously only had on the iPad Pro. I think these new features really add to the overall experience of using the Apple Pencil, and I'm looking forward to seeing more third-party apps make use of them. The Pencil Pro also has Find My support to help you locate it when you've lost it. And as for pricing, it goes for $129. An advantage of the 11-inch iPad Air is you can use many of the same iPad accessories as previous models, since they are almost the same size. This is pretty convenient because there's already a lot of options out in the market, and I picked up a couple of cases from Amazon, and these were not at all expensive. I like this style with this see-through back, so you can still see the Apple logo, but these hard cases don't feel quite as protective as the silicone type. Out of the three, my favorite is definitely this one that makes the iPad look even more purple. This iPad works with the original Magic Keyboard, but frustratingly not the new one, which is only compatible with the new iPad Pro. I don't actually own the original version, but I have a bunch of Bluetooth keyboards that I mainly use for digital journaling and writing emails. The Apple Pencil Pro can use all the same accessories as the second gen pencil, and I'll quickly show you some of my favorites. I always get questions about these fine steel tips. I use these along with a screen protector, and I feel like they give more precision and control and don't wear down as easily as the original Apple tips. Another must have, in my opinion, is an Apple Pencil sleeve to give it more grip when you're handwriting. And I also recently got this pen tips box, which is super cute. Most of my iPad accessories are from Amazon, and I'll link to my Amazon favorites page in the video description if you're interested. The biggest downside to the iPad Air, in my opinion, is the LCD display. It's not a bad looking screen by itself, but compared side by side with the OLED screen on the M4 iPad Pro, it is noticeably less bright and vivid. It's not going to stop you from taking effective notes, playing games, or anything else that you want to do on the iPad, but if having the brightest screen matters to you, then I think this is a significant difference. One thing that I didn't find noticeable is the 60 Hz display, which is technically a lower refresh rate than the Pro. I know that this is a big deal for some people, but personally, even comparing them side by side, I couldn't really tell any difference in smoothness. If you're considering getting the iPad Air, but you're not sure which size to choose, I would personally choose based on where I'm going to be using it the most. I love the larger size for taking notes and drawing, but it is quite heavy, especially if you want to use it together with the Magic Keyboard. So if you want to carry it around and use it on the go, then I think the 11 inch would be better for portability. If you will mostly use it at your desk or you want to use it as a second monitor, then I think the larger size would be more suitable. I love decorating my home screen and I actually already had all of this set up from my previous video on the iPad Pro. I just changed the wallpaper using some images I found on Pinterest, and I also checked out the new Apple wallpapers that came with this iPad Air that matches the artwork on the box. 
As for what's on my home screen, I'm using a bunch of different widget apps and I'll try to put their names on the screen if you're interested. I'm planning to do an updated home screen tutorial at some point, so don't forget to subscribe and look out for that. If you're considering getting an iPad, I think this iPad Air is a great choice, especially now that it comes in two sizes. It's more than capable for things like digital note-taking and drawing, and it also supports the new Apple Pencil Pro. There's some differences to the more expensive iPad Pro, like the display being the main one in my opinion, but I think the iPad Air offers great value considering it also costs a lot less. Apple has hinted at new AI features coming to a future iPadOS update that might be exclusive to the M4 iPad Pro, but for the time being, there really isn't any functionality that I feel like I'm missing when using the iPad Air. If you're considering whether to upgrade your old iPad Air, I don't think the M2 chip is going to feel significantly different compared to the M1, but I think it would be worthwhile if you're using a much older iPad or if you want to use the Apple Pencil Pro. I posted a separate unboxing video about the M4 iPad Pro, which you can watch now by clicking on the thumbnail. Anyways, I hope you found the video useful. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and let me know your thoughts on the new iPad. Thanks so much for watching.